Oh my God, it's over, finally. January here in Pennsylvania and here in the winter we don't find much so I'm going to try and flip some streamside or brook salamanders today and I have a goal of trying to get five species here with the gem of the day being Pseudotrodon ruber ruber otherwise known as a northern red salamander I've had a hell of a time finding them this past few months. I tried in the fall a few times. I wanted to put together a video on them, but I failed. I, I found larvae, but I failed at the adults. So let's see if today's different. I got Mia here with me, and we're gonna go take a walk and see what we can do. The birds are awake. I want you to listen for a sound that sounds like somebody whistling poorly, like, like, you hear that? That's a white-throated sparrow. Here's a photo. Here's the habitat and a quick tip of advice. As you can see, there's a seepage here and it's frozen down here. And I'm going to work up to the head of the seepage up that hill a bit where the water's coming out of the ground at 50 plus degrees. That's where you're gonna find most of your amphibians right now. They're not gonna be in these colder, more frozen sections. Another quick tip, in this running water, you could probably find some things, but you're better off hitting seepages like this one over here, at least in the pure winter. And here's what I'm talking about. I'm up closer to the headway, headwaters of this seepage so you can see how it's not frozen this is where you want to look under these rocks and in the leaf litter of course our first herp of the day is this northern two-line salamander that's uresia bislionata and it's kind of hidden underneath a leaf there i'm going to see if i can get it out for a better look my ever patient dog mia she's probably like what the hell man i thought we were going for a walk but i promised to give her one after this Here's a better look at the northern two-line salamander. I'm keeping it in a Tupperware container with water because the air is pretty cold out and I don't want to expose them to the elements. These are amphibians and they uh, have they need to be stay moist, so I don't want the cold air drying them out. And I don't know how that feels, and I'm sure it's got to do some sort of damage to them. So just trying to do this as ethically as possible. See, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies for these things to escape, so I'm sure I'll lose a few salamanders. And you'll see me cry if I see an adult northern red and lose that. So down here you can see the water, but up on these edges is kind of where you'll find Plethodon species, like Plethodon cenarian, uh, cenarius, the redback salamander, where the mud stays moist like this, but it's not frozen. They'll sometimes congregate to these seats of edges. So we'll see if we can turn one of them up too. I'm hoping to get you guys a flip clip or something, but I gotta be honest, my hands are wet from flipping these rocks and they are freezing in this, in this uh, weather. That's another reason to keep those salamanders in the Tupperware. Species number two of the day is what we're looking for, but it's the larval version. So that there is a larval northern red salamander. You can see the gills on it still popping off the back of the head. So that gives me some hope. Maybe we can turn up an adult. But that's species number two, and remember the goal is five. You can see that even in the middle of the winter, these seepages that don't freeze near the headwaters provide an opportunity for life. This poor guy I don't know where his claws are, but here's a crayfish. 
He's missing his front claws. Got him underneath this little, you can see he's alive. I don't know what's going on there. Good luck, buddy. There's some sort of spider here. Maybe a small fishing spider. And there we go. Oh, and there's a two line. Somehow I missed the two line sitting right there. Cool. Could be wishful thinking, but I'm really liking the look of this area right here. I just lost a dusky, so keep trying. As expected, we have species number three. I won't count the dusky since I could not get a hand on it. But if you look, we have an eastern red back salamander there. And then down by the rock where I flipped is two others. This is what I thought would happen with this soil that wasn't wet. They, they congregate to the area. These guys are tiny though. These are little babies. So let's get a better look at them. I'm huddling over these guys because I don't want any wind to dry them out. But this is Plethodon cenarius, Eastern Redback Salamander. The absolute most common amphibian around in these parts. Cute little guys, we're gonna put them back and continue the Northern Red search. So let me show you what I do. I'm gonna try to do this one hand. I find a crack where I can put the salamanders back and they're gonna crawl under the rock. And then I'm gonna give them a second to get out of the way. And then I'm just gonna peel in the moisture here. They'll figure it out, it's wet under there. But always return the rocks exactly back to where you put them, even if you're not finding amphibians because other things rely on them. We're still in this dry area here. Oh, there's another red back. See him down there. He hasn't moved, so I'm just gonna replace the rock gently. Northern red larva number two. I'm gonna put this guy right back in the water and put his rock back. And here's a healthier version of the crayfish. <laughs> Not sure what happened to that other guy. Oh, let me get my focus. Not sure what happened to that other guy with his pinchers, but this guy's a little more equipped to defend himself. I saw a flash of red and hoped it was a red salamander for a second. Put his rock back. Bet y'all didn't know this was turning into a crayfish channel. There he is. Big guy, bigger. This dude only has one pincher. I'm striking out hard, so I'm gonna try a few of these creek side rocks before moving on to a spring house. You okay? Hanging in there? Too bad. This is one of the species I had hoped to see. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Let me look over. Oh, this water is freezing. Yeah. Dead pickerel frog. Ooh, that water hurts. These guys can survive in it though. Who knows what happened to this unfortunate individual? That's with the base polusters. Pickerel frog. This should give you an idea of how cold out it is here. You can see some ice on the rocks right next to the running water. Well, I'm gonna go try a spring house now. A, a neat fact, on um, submerging my hand in the water actually made it warmer, I guess because all the blood's rushing to it now. They were freezing before I swore I was getting some frostbite out here. We have two two-line salamanders under this rock. Can't seem to find even a dusky for you. So now that I'm desperate, I'm going to shine inside the spring house that is falling down. And hopefully I don't get crushed. Mia's tied outside, so she should be good. I think she's ready to go. Hear that little nasally sound? Listen again. <laughs> Hear that? That's a white breasted nuthatch. They work the trees and will crawl upside down sometimes or sideways looking for bugs. A week later, Northern Red Salamanders take two.
Mark my words, in May I'm gonna come back and I'm going to flip a milk snake at a new spot here where this rock wall is stacked up and falling down. This is perfect. It warmed up a little bit. I had to wait for it to get to 17 degrees before I came out and started looking around for some owls. So we have this evergreen here, which I still need to check out, but check this out. I just want to show you something. Look at all this. That's a skull. These are owl pellets. So there's definitely owls. There's some whitewash over there, which is basically bird crap. Look at this. Hold on. that the owl spitting out. My guess is these are gonna be long-eared owls, but you now I have to try and find them. Long-eared owls are my favorite of the eight species I can get here locally. It is threatened here in Pennsylvania and remains an enigma by everyone who seeks it. It's a ghost of the woods. Hours upon hours to be spent looking at trees, and if you're lucky, one day they will materialize right before your eyes. As if they weren't hard enough to find in habitat, they are one of the most strictly nocturnal owls. Seeing one flying or hunting at dusk is near impossible, unlike some of the other owl species. Superficially, they can resemble great horns, but are only one-fifth of their bulk. Freaking finally. I have a picture I can share, but these guys were pretty um, aware of me. And then, believe it or not, there's other people out here walking and there's a trail nearby. So it's kind of got out of the area because I didn't want to draw attention to them. I don't want people to start flushing the owls. And I don't want to be responsible for tipping anybody off. So, man, it's cold out. God. finally freaking find a northern red salamander. Here's a great example of why spring houses are so good for the species and other streamside type salamanders. As you can see this duckweed or whatever this is is still growing just fine even though it's only 21 degrees out right now. The water that seeps out of the ground which is why the spring house was built in the first place probably back in the 1800s comes out at about 52 degrees so in the winter, I don't look downstream. I look close to the headwaters, close to the source. So right here is probably a juvenile northern dusky salamander. There it goes. I'm gonna try and flip all these rocks and find a red. Teenagers are using this place to party. We have a pickerel frog here. I'm keeping him in the water because of the uh, temperature. But I flipped him under a rock. Saw a few other smaller immature salamanders. No red yet, not even a larva. So I'm gonna put this guy back. Just don't wanna keep him exposed to the air very long. Nature gods were on my side this morning as I came upon a great horned owl staring back at me. She was aware of everything around her. She stood stoic, enduring the winter and all of its challenges as the apex predator of her environment. Absolutely no animal other than humans and their pressures is a threat, and she knows it.
Okay, morning birding is over. I'm going to go try for reds now and look at my friggin' hair. The seepages are pretty easy to see when there's snow on the ground. Tons of birds all using this uh, exposed water to their advantage. First herp of the day, a northern two line that's ready to go. Hold on. Let's see if I can chill out. He's not going to chill out. <laughs> oh my god, it's over. Finally. It's not the brightest individual, but it is a chunker. Northern red salamander. Oh, thank God. This is months in the making. Now, earlier in the video was a different day. Today, it's about 40, so I don't want to keep him out too long, but the water's probably colder down here than the actual air, but I'll keep wetting him. I spent maybe 15 minutes with the bright red salamander. I pondered her episometic coloration. How old was she? Has she survived so long because her bright red coloration warned the skunks and raccoons of the night to her distasteful palatability? Most reds don't even reach maturity until almost four years of age. They live up to 20 years in captivity. The lifespan of these small secretive species never ceases to amaze me. Even if she were 10, how incredible is that that she has survived this long in nature's cruel world? Before I put this guy back, um, I just want to reflect back on how long it took me to find one this year. I've been trying since October to make a video. I mean, of course I want to find one for me, but to make a video that had Northern Reds as the focus, especially with winter here in Pennsylvania. So this is Pseudotridon or Pseudotriton ruber ruber it's a northern red salamander i'm gonna wet him one more time we don't want to do any damage Gorgeous animals. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a like. Spring will be here before you know it. If you're here for herp content, I'll have a ton of it soon. So please subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of every new video I publish. This species gave me a run for my money these past few months, but perseverance pays off. If you're missing nature in your life, remember, you're going to keep missing it until you suck it up and step into the outdoors.